Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Lisa Jans and I'm also known as Job Coach Germany. And as you can see, I'm not here on my own today. I have beautiful Manong Liebert here with me, also known as Euphemia Dooley. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are y'all? Yeah, hopefully everybody is as excited as we are. Um, so there is already Syed, and I'm just um, popping the comment into our uh, on the stage basically. So Syed is very excited. I've been waiting. Is it going to start? We are starting now. So thanks for being here. Let us all know where you're tuning in from. So as you know, I am uh, currently in Magdeburg in the northern part of Germany, but uh, Euphemia and Julie is in Texas, right? all the way down in austin so this so is this really is cool, cool that um we get to do this year even, even though we have several, several hours of time, time difference. difference but I'm let me um use this opportunity to give you a really cool introduction, introduction first. first so basically so everybody, everybody that is watching that is, is supposed to um know, know what we're going, going to talk going about, to talk about. Because, because this live stream is about Hold on. Hold on. I th I can you can let you me let know? know um, um, everybody, everybody, let me know in the, in the comments, comments whether you whether hear, you me, hear twice. me twice. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I can I hear me twice, twice. But that, but that shouldn't be shouldn't an issue. An issue. So, so um, this, this interview is basically, is basically designed, designed, designed for everybody, for everybody that, is that is working, working in, the in the creative field. field. So, so designers, designers artists, artists, UX, UX UI researchers, researchers, UX, UI designers, UI designers and, and um, uh, photographers, photographers maybe, maybe because, because there have there been people that have approached me, me um, that have that asked have me, Lisa, Lisa, I don't know, I don't know how, how to prepare my, my application, application documents, documents because, because actually... actually there are so there are many so templates, many templates out, there, out there, and I don't know, I don't which, know one which one to choose. choose. And, here's and here's the key the thing, thing that you need to know. Your portfolio, your portfolio and your application, your application is the is first, first version of your work. work. And, you're and you're basically representing, representing how well you are, you are working with these, with these documents, documents, if the people, if the people don't, don't know who you are. You are. And, that's and that's what Euphemia and Julie and I are going to talk about today. So, a little bit of background. Uh, you and, and I have been I have been know, or have, have known, known each other for 20 years, so, so we go we way, go way, way back. <laughs> when I was, when I was thinking, thinking about that, I was really confused, confused. Thinking, about, thinking about, is it really, is it really that, that long? long? That's, That's really a long time. Have we been that long on this planet? That's really strange. So, so um, um, we grew up we in the same, same town. town. It's a very it's a small very town, town called Halberstadt, close to Magdeburg. So, for everybody, so for everybody that doesn't that know where Magdeburg is, it's between Berlin and, and Hanover, Hanover, right in the, right middle. Right in the middle. And then, and a, then little a little bit south of that, that's the little town where we grew up. And it's, yeah, how can we how can we say that? A small town with timbered houses as well, but very, very conservative, conservative as, I as I would say and, and um, a lot of people lot of unfortunately people are leaving the city because, because there are not so many job opportunities, opportunities. And, and obviously the, the employers, employers that we have in that city, city are, are very conservative, very conservative. <laughs> so, so youngsters, the youngsters are looking are for, for jobs everywhere else, everywhere else. and, and um, um, Euphemia and Julie and I we grew up in the same area we have basically lots and lots of memories from our teenager lives which was well, fun, but obviously, um, like, every like every teenager, teenager life, life uh, completely, uh, completely chaos. chaos. Uh, at least uh, at in my eyes, eyes. <laughs> chaos. chaos. And, and um, and, um yeah, you feel yeah, you decided, decided to leave to Germany, Germany uh, for good, for good in 2008, 2008, and she moved, and she moved to, the to the United, United States, States and has since been. been Working, working in increasing, increasing improving her, her, her career as an artist. artist. She's, She's always been an artist. As long as, as I have as known her, she is, is the, the, the greatest artist that I know. I was I always because we had, had art class at school, or, or, it, it, it's cool, it's right? School, and right? it was and just. It was just for me, For me, it was hard, it was hard to do hard because, because I'm not that much of an artist. Everything that, everything that I can do is just okay. okay. With a little with bit of the stuff, and I can do watercolor. Water <laughs> but everything but that Euphemia did was just, 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 just uh, you can uh, see that she's very talented. talented. And 
Mm-hmm. She's not she's just, not just um, a teacher, but, but also she knows, knows a lot about UX research. research, she's a UX UI, UI designer, she's into she's photography, photography, and so much more. And we will talk about all of those things today. today my guest of honor is Euphemia and Judy. A warm welcome again from my side. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to everybody today. And before we dive into the questions, I want to look at some of these comments. So, um, I had asked if it works. It works. Can anyone explain to me how this works? Well, basically, we are streaming through Streamer to different channels. Just for everybody to know, we are live here on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. And you can basically participate through the chat. So, so basically, basically what you're doing, what you're doing Syed. Syed. that's the right thing. Then, then um, um, ah, yeah, I yeah, 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 you, and, you and yeah. Yeah. So, somebody so somebody's saying, saying that the voice, voice is echoing. Is echoing. Okay. 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 Let me take Let a me look take what, a what I can do about, about that. that. Can you still can hear you me? Still okay. Okay. But I think I cannot hear you now. So maybe I need to take... Hold on. Hold on. What can I what do, can about, I do that? about that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I, think that's I think okay. that's okay. All right. All right. So, so now I've now, given a little bit of introduction, introduction and we've talked we about you uh, living in Texas, in Texas now, now, but you have, have a, a, yeah, a, a broad, broad career path, career path already behind you behind and definitely ahead, ahead of you. Ahead of you. And, and I would like to know more about that. So I know that you studied communications design and you have a bachelor's of fine art in that field. And you also you also have a degree in graphic design. But can you give us a little overview of your career path, please? Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, like you already mentioned, I have moved here in 2008, so to the United States, and first lived in Arkansas, believe it or not, the natural state, okay? So, beautiful nature, don't just say that. <laughs> and so, we, um, I started college there once I got my uh, permanent residence in 2011. Is what okay. I started college. Okay. And then after, in 2013, I got my associate's degree in graphic design. Um, and then I moved to Texas because I was like, we need to go. <laughs> and so, <laughs> um, I, well, basically what I did is like, I took the map of the United States and I was like, okay, what are really good colleges for design? Where can I have a, if I wanted to then continue for master study, where could I then also stay? Where's a good job market, good culture, weather, blah, 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 the whole nine yards. And so, um, and then I basically just picked, I was in between, uh, I think it was in between Arizona, New Mexico, um, of course, California, um, Texas, and another one in a little further up north, can't quite recall now. <laughs> Okay. Well, okay. From all of those options, um, Austin, Texas was basically the best fit for me. Um, we have great, we have great schools here. Um, offer master's degree in uh, in graphic design. We're just not. I don't want to say it's super rare, but not every school offers it. Um, okay. And yeah, so I ended up moving here to Austin, and have been here since 2013. Um, in 2017 then i finally finished college super fan super excited about it oh 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 i got this too Ooh, oh very nice, very nice. Ooh, that's, Ooh, so that's so impressive so oh my gosh yay <laughs> congratulations, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> um, so i got that accomplished in 2017 and um have been working all the way throughout too so for my own company, Euphemia and Julie Art and Design, I've been doing work since oh, 2006, 2007, and then officially since 2008. And then I, in the meantime, from there all the way up, up to graduation of college, I worked for, um, goodness, I worked for the Home Depot for the Technology Center. I worked for, um, for Visa. Uh, in their uh, tech center, and then I worked for Apple at the tech center, all the way until the uh, the pandemic started. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That has a lot of people. Yeah. People, yeah. Yes, yes, it has. Um, but ever since now, where everything is somewhat back to normal to an extent, you know, um, definitely out there to 
keep exploring more opportunities, I guess you could say. <laughs> Yes, yes, wonderful. wonderful. Okay, okay, so okay, maybe so we can use this, can use this video as well to well increase, increase those opportunities, those opportunities, opportunities as, well. as well. So I think so a lot of people, lot of people uh, some people say that, uh, still, uh, that still, still that we have some echoing, echoing problems. problems. So what I will so do, will and people, do, you need to let me know whether that's working, I'm just unplugging my fancy microphone. Okay, can you hear okay, me? Okay, can you hear me? Okay. So okay. you guys, so, thank you very much for the comments and let me know whether you can uh, whether you're still uh, hearing an echo or not. Echo but, or not um, but, um, because I can actually hear I myself. I don't know where that is coming from. Um, uh, don't know whether I can use any headphones. I don't think so. I don't think so. Because then you cannot hear me anymore. Hear me well, anymore. let me know well, whether we fix the problem or not. Or and there is one question already, question already um, that I will take to the stage. So I have so doubts when, when we create a persona, persona, I think. Why is it too why difficult it too to create difficult a problem create statement problem in one sentence? sentence? Can you please explain later? Well, Syed, I don't know. I don't really know what you're talking about. Are you talking about your resume or a persona such as that you are using like an artist? Let me know that me know in the comments, that comments that again, because, again because, because otherwise I won't understand your question properly. So, so basically, basically what you are saying, saying you mean, really you mean, is that, is that um, you have a great have career, a great um, career and, and you have lots and lots of, lots of experience, of experience and, and there are, uh, what I still what don't I still get is kind of like the difference between UX research and UX UI design. And there has been a question that has been sent in from Instagram yesterday. Lori sent the question and she said, because she has some background in UX research, I think, and she said that she doesn't really have a portfolio of lots and lots of artwork because she's just a, a UX, UX researcher. Research. Is that normal that you don't have a big portfolio like that? Or can you just simply explain to me the difference between research and the design? Um, well, it depends. Uh, for, for the UX research, basically what you focus on is, is your user, right? So you research and you really study them to understand who they are. So whether that is um, on a psychological level, on a social level, on a cultural level, um, on a biological level even, you know. So you really want to study your user inside and out. Now, it is important to have a, have a portfolio there. So even if you're only doing UX research, which is a crucial part of the design process to begin with, um, you should still have a portfolio with that. You can then focus, of course, or lay the focus onto the research process, you know, how you contributed to a certain project, what research methods you used, what were your insights, what was helpful, not helpful, you know, um, and just overall how you contributed and how you really made that your work. And then you can, in the end, for example, put it out, okay, this helped us create X, Y, Z design, or this helped us create the interface for this, or this helped us, you know, um, in a similar fashion to that. But for any designer, for any artist, it is absolutely mandatory that you have a portfolio. Mm, yeah, okay. okay. So that so makes sense. So um, obviously, it's uh, very important to, uh, to know that, that there is so much background knowledge and research involved in this entire process. And I think that there are a lot of people that are not even aware of that fact. So uh, I'm just thinking about those people that uh, say, okay, design an app for me and I want, to, want it to look like that. But then, there are so many other steps involved in that. It's crazy. Okay. Yeah. It wow. doesn't look like that. You know, there's like, see what you as a, as a user, as a final product, 
you see at the tip of the iceberg. What you don't see is the entire bottom half, the 90% of the iceberg, you know, that includes the research, the development, the prototyping, you know, the user testing, the whole nine yards, you know. So yeah. there's, it definitely uh, takes an extensive amount of, uh, amount of work to really create a successful app or any kind of design product. Yeah, yeah. And um, can you, um, when you are now working in this field, does it work like in sort of project or gigs, as you would call it? Or uh, are you being booked for, um, I don't know, like you go and work for a company and then you get whatever project is out there? That's a great question. So, uh, Usually how it works, it depends on whether you do, let's say, freelance work or whether you work for a company. So okay. for when you're doing freelance work, um, you basically shuffle everything into once. You're mm -hmm. the one who's going to be doing the research. You're going to be the doing the UX design as well as the UI design. And then you're also going to have to come up like uh, with the identity or with the branding of whatever you're representing whatever you're visually depe depicting um it can then be the advertising it can be the social marketing or the social media strategies you know so it's really everything all at once that you'll be doing uh, when you're working for a company on the other hand it depends on what team you're on and how big the company is um really large companies they will have a, a ux research team that will also work on the, on the UX design. Um, they will have just a UI team and um, that really develop the interface of the of the product, whether that's a vehicle, uh, like the vehicle dashboard, whether that's a computer application, phone app, or um, the interface of any kind of hardware product, like printer, computer, XYZ, you know? Um, and then of course you have separate divisions for advertising, another one for branding. So it can be like, laid out across the board. So it really depends on where you kind of work at. But mm -hmm. over the past 10 years, I would say, um, it's uh, there's really been the trend to really separate out those different um, paths for the design process, even because they're just so important that not just one person or one small team can handle it, depending on the size of the company. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's um, also a trend that I see with regards to the, the field that I'm working in, for example. When you look at smaller companies, they don't understand how important HR work can be. So once there's just one person taking care of everything within the HR department, and then they realize, okay, so actually there's more to it, and um, if we separate it, it would be more beneficial for the company. So it's similar in that field. Obviously, UX, UI, design, and research research, research is, is very new, very new. yeah so yeah, like so from like, the job market point of view it's not kind of like a hammer smith or something like that but um it's quite new and uh, companies need to uh learn that it's that they have to focus on that and that, those are the jobs for the future right so um obviously there will be more in your research and obviously more in the design field okay okay and um, yeah, obviously, also something that just popped in my head is when you say that working as a freelancer, you basically do all the work. That also means that you have to do the administrative side, right? Like the accounting and uh, sending invoices and all of this stuff. If the client wants you to do that, correct. Yeah. So the client can also just offer you or hire you to do the visual aspect of their app. Um, and then they would hire for say a smaller company or they can use their own software tools to do it themselves. Uh -huh. um, but then it just needs to be uh, crucial that they can be integrated with your product. So really open communication is very important there. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, that's really interesting. And obviously um, a new way of working because there is um, so much flexibility and at the same time also insecurity. I, or as we say, like 
when we take a look at the generation of the baby boomers, for example, they were going to a job and wanted to stay there until they go into their pension <laughs> time. Yeah. yeah, one job and then uh, for their lifetime, but that's obviously not working um, in, yeah, just nowadays anymore in general, I think, and for our generation, it's, there are still people that are working like that, but um, it's adjusting. Yeah, and um, what do you like the most about your job? Um, for one, um, I'm just super into research so I just like when I want to know something when I study something like I go in there obsessively and I don't stop until I know everything inside and out you know so I get <laughs> some person that's like FYI did you know <laughs> you know yeah. so um, that's that's what I really enjoy um but mostly it's because you're also uh, studying different cultures different ethnicity groups you know different languages how people from all over the world like really like grew up in their societies, how they were raised, what kind of impact certain things have on them. Um, or the other day I was doing some uh, language studies uh, on that. Um, for example, um, just a simple example, um, on what corner of the screen should we put the X um, to close out the application in the upper left corner or the upper right corner, you know, mm -hmm. um, of a, like of an app, for example, or yeah, just a mobile website. And so what's really important is we as um, Europeans and Western civilization, um, our, uh, we're going by the um, Roman alphabet. And so we're used to reading from the left. We begin at the top left and we end on the top right. So that's where we tend to look when we want to close something out, right? No. Uh, however, um, other uh, languages... For example, I know Chinese and Japanese does it. Um, they also have other varieties, but part of them they uh, they can read and write from right to left, okay. and sometimes traditional languages even from bottom to top instead of top to bottom. So, with that being said, um, your last line of focus would then be the upper left side, you know, and yeah. so yeah. Um, it really just depends on where are you from you know what is your cultural audience what are your users who are you trying to address you know and in between those different cultures are their preferences you know mm -hmm. so there's definitely a lot of um i don't want to say nitpicking but there's an incredible amount of detail that needs to be paid attention to in order to really properly address the audience yeah, yeah. That's, uh, it's, uh, it's so incredible. incredible. That's overwhelming. Uh, just, uh, I mean, you're, we're talking about a little button and where this button goes, or a little X and where it goes, and there's so much research involved. But it just makes sense. It so it makes so much sense. Just um, thinking about scrolling on your phone, for example, and then you don't really spend much time if you don't find what you're looking for so if the x is somewhere and you have to search for it just because it's a different culture <laughs> it's just crazy yeah but it is very important and, and talking about languages i know that um, we have spoken or we have learned some languages also in school and i know that you have various language skills do you still need your german skills um i would say yes so, I mean, of course, like with me having lived in over here in the United States for so long, um, German and English are both my become my, my mother tongue. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. although by now, you know, I'm a little bit of a lot of, uh, when I talk German, because I have very, <laughs> that's normal, I think. <laughs> but, but that's just, a, you know, if I live in Germany again for like a couple months, it'll be just gone like that, you know, it's yeah. just kind of like yeah. a bicycle, whatever, you never unlearn how to do it. Um, and yes, it does help, especially with Latin too that we had studied back then with Frau Liebrich. Oh my god! I remember. Oh my god! Don't say Don't that name. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> it really, really helps tremendously, especially when I then started studying uh, French and Spanish. Because mm -hmm. what's weird about it is, it's like you think you study one language at a time, but uh, the more languages you know, the easier it gets to learn them because for, then you start conjugating them all in a row, you know. Oh, so, no. for example, yeah. when you uh, 
when you have like one vocabulary that you know from your mother tongue, like in German and in English, you know, and then you learn the vocab for that in, in Latin since it was our first foreign language. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you have those three beside each other and then you add the next language and it just gets added on. So you, in your head, you automatically repeat um, the word in every single language, you know, and it's yeah. the same when it comes to verb conjugation to, um, uh, to what is it called? The times whenever you do like all the uh, different past, present, future tenses, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. it's the same thing. And so German and Latin both still help me learn all of that. Mm -hmm. And of course, nowadays with so many companies being global and wanting to address a global audience and a multicultural, diverse audience, um, the more languages you speak, the better off you are. You know, like many want you to at least be bilingual. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it can absolutely help you broaden your horizon in many, many aspects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's so um, kind, of like kind of like for every kind of job uh, in this globalized world, right? Uh, that we need to learn more languages. But it's I always think we have um, an advantage because we don't have to learn German because we know German. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously but then obviously we had to learn English and then obviously I totally agree to what you say with Latin that it helps to learn other languages, even though I thought that when we were learning and studying it, oh, that doesn't really make any sense because we're never going to speak it, but they definitely help with learning other Roman languages, yeah. And okay. now, now I know that obviously you you use your art skills in your professional life, but you are also a photographer, you paint, and you also do sculptures, right? I did at some point. It was part of my uh, college education, yes. Ah, okay. And do you do all of these three things also, like photography and painting? Obviously, then sculpture is not. But do you do that for fun or do you also sell that? Both. So um, for me, it's like important since we designers, we're, although we're, there's a really big part of like sketching and creating and being physical, however, for the most part, you still sit on a computer like almost all day, you know, even if you have a drawing ta tablet, you know, like I have my Wacom tablet here, you know, um, but it's still like a technical device. So for me, it's incredibly important to not lose touch of the physical media. Um, and so to kind of completely disengage from the tech world and kind of give my brain like, um, use the other side of my brain pretty much, you know, to be actually like physically creative with that. And so uh, painting ha has like I really enjoy like large scale oil paintings um, mm -hmm. because it just allows me personally to really express myself, to really learn more and study about color theory, you know, things like that. And um, so that's pretty important because again, if you do design, it's you design for the people. 100% yeah. of your work is only for the people. There's nothing um, of self-expression in there, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. and um, that's what I use painting for to balance it out. Um, so, and photography is just, um, I took a class at some point and just instantly was really good at it and uh, I just enjoyed it. I'm like, I'm just taking pictures, you know, that came to class after our first project and hey, those are really good. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, from there I also learned like the art of printing, you know, like really large scale printing on all the different types of papers and different types of printers, you know, and just became obsessed with it. So ever since I then upgraded my lenses, upgraded printers here at home, you know, and just thoroughly enjoy just capturing pictures, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I've been uh, booked to do weddings before um, for video and photography. I do a lot of concert photography, um, which I haven't even updated my photography portfolio in a while. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. uh, but that's also something I just thoroughly enjoy, you know, because it's like once you have, once you learn how to really, or once you learn and understand what it is a, 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 a DSLR camera captures, you know, it's not just the image that you see, but it captures the amount of light in that particular frame, the amount of saturation, you know, and um, 
but you didn't learn how to manipulate that manually and how much of that you want to capture. It's just absolutely fascinating for me. So it's, it's definitely part of my work as well. And plus, yeah. it's nice if you use your own pictures, you know, your own photos rather than stock photography, because then you run into the chance that somebody else may have used it before, you know, and you don't want to be, oh, that other person, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's That makes sense. And I've never thought of that uh, in that sense, what you've just explained, that obviously there is this business side, the professional side, where you are creating art for somebody else entirely. And then there is obviously you want to have art for yourself as well that yeah it's just completely blowing my mind right now because obviously i always thought okay you just made your hobby as a career but obviously there's always still i mean there's always the business part involved that pressure deadlines and all of these things and it's not that you're expressing your passion but the you're you're expressing the passion of the customer and obviously of their target audience somehow that's just crazy that's really interesting wow okay so multifaceted this job so um i would love to share your cv uh, or your resume with uh, the audience is that okay for you okay so for that i need to do a little adjustment here and share the screen i'll be with you in a second so i've prepared it here okay so you should be able to see that now so um and i want to share that with you guys because this is a unique resume and it's one of its kind and i it's the first time that i've seen um a resume like that and it's just like simply i want to praise it because it's so good so that goes into that question that a lot of people ask me with regards to what kind of template should I use? Don't use any sort of template. Make up your own because you are the designer and you, this is your first piece of work that you will share with a potential employer. So here you can see um, Euphemia and Julie has um, definitely uh, chosen a dark uh, design, but as you can see, it's not just the black, but she has a little thing on top that says, tis not dark, but the sum of color, because that's what black is all about, right? So the sum of all colors, and that's just amazing. I love that. So here you can even show your personality. You can show what you're about and that you're not just about the colors, but that you have really thought about how to set up this resume. And you can see that obviously there are, um, she has also her teal color. And if you take a look at her website and if you take a look at her, all of her social media channels, you will see that the teal will be there as well in her design, in her logo. And um, that is something that you need to think about as well. If you are an artist, that you need to make all of the documents that you're sharing and your social media profiles consistent. So the design that you're using needs to be consistent throughout everything that you're sharing with a potential employer. Obviously, you can recreate yourself, you can recreate your colors, but you need to be consistent wherever you are so that they know, oh, okay, so that is that is Euphemia and Julie, for example. And then you can see, and that is also something that I um, realize is, I think, typical for the US market, that you only have a one-page resume, so that you have all the information on one page. So in Germany, there are still a lot of people that are using two pages, but we always say the less you have, the easier it is for the person that needs to decide whether they want to invite you or not, um, then the higher your chances are. Yeah. So stick with one page if you can. And here is all the important information is on here. You can see her educational background, you can see the awards, you can see all the languages, her expertise, which are really extensive. And the expertise is that what basically I think gets will get you the job or not, because that's what people that are looking for designers are looking for. What kind of uh, software can you use and um, what kind of knowledge and expertise do you have? And then obviously they will also take 
take a look at your employment because obviously if you have um, previous employers that have great brands as your previous previous employers, it um, will definitely speak for you. But there's also one part that you shouldn't forget, and it's um, above the contacts. Basically, you can see this little text where she's talking about her. Talent as an artist, and that is something that I want you to pay attention to. Now, I'm not showing this to you that you're copying it. I'm showing this to you so that you get an inspiration for your own CV, for your own uh, resume. Yeah, and obviously, you want to make it consistent again with your um, cabinet. So, if you're applying for a job in Germany, the, the recruiters are still very much interested in receiving a cover letter. So you want to make sure that your cover letter has a similar design to your uh, resume or your CV. Okay, so that's basically what I wanted to share with you guys. And for everybody that is interested in booking a UI designer or an artist, a photographer, you now have the CV of your premium duty. So go ahead and book your services. All right, so let's stop that here and go back to, to trust. Yeah, so thank you very much that I was able to share that because I think that is really, really helpful. Oh, yeah, and that is your, your card, your business card. Yeah, and here you can see it is also the same design, teal and black and your name and art design. And then in the background are the contact details. So it's very minimalistic, but I love it. It's perfect. Oh, and it's metal. Oh, you're yeah, right. Yeah, I know. You have right. So, and here, so that is also very important if you're an artist. When you hand out, for example, your business cards, you want to make sure that the paper, for example, that you're using is not just any sort of thin paper that you're using. But you need to put in thought into that as well. So, your opinion really has used in, I think, I don't know if you're the only one, but it's the, the only one that I've seen that is a metal part. So, it's, um, I remember, what was that about? Oh, yeah, I think there was um, a documentary about a guy that wanted to introduce credit cards with metal base, and that it's just so fair. Fancy to drop a metal card like Dang! and you can just simply hear it. And that's just it's so everybody will recognize that it's you. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay, so um how uh, when you are so now you we are talking about US market, US uh, work market, and how do you normally apply for a job? Do you go through agencies? Do you simply use the internet to search for jobs? Is there a certain website for artists, for UX UI designers that you use, or are people approaching you? Really great question. And so there are actually various ways to go about that. So, of course, for one, it depends on your online persona. You know, like if they Google your name, are you the one who's going to come up first in Google results, you know? Or are you somewhere on the second, third, fourth page or just fourth, fifth down the road, you know? Okay. So you want to you make sure that your um, uh, SEO strategy, so your search engine optimization, you know, has you up on the very top. Um, so when you then, for example, sign up for various job sites like Indeed, Monster, um, at times LinkedIn as well, even though it's more for networking, um, I don't even know what others there are, but there's like a huge variety of online websites where you can just look through jobs, you know, so that when recruiters, agencies, whoever, when they'll be looking for jobs uh, on those sites or for employees, you know, you're going to be able to come up. And the more often you come up, the more important your online presence gets, you know. Um, so that's one thing, and uh, that's how I've been contacted in many, many ways. You know, they have found my resume and they have contacted, contacted me, you know. So, um, plus it's always kind of nicer to see, oh, this company is actually interested in you rather than you reaching out to all these companies and it may or may not be a great fit, you know. So that's a really good thing about it. Um, another thing is... You can also apply directly for the companies. So what I usually suggest is um, wherever you want to work at, you know, whether that's a larger city um, away from your hometown or whether it's a completely different country or just wherever, um, 
go ahead and google the uh, like successful companies in that area whether it's like it whether it's tech whether it's um social strategy anything you know just google the most successful ones of where you want to work at and then mm-hmm. apply for them directly because every company is going to have a little careers field or jobs field on their website you just click on that you search through see whether there's a job that you like and that would fit your resume and then you just apply directly with them because then there's no middleman there's no recruiting agency there is no what he said she said kind of thing yeah yeah so you're just directly with the employer and it also shows that you're more um that you're doing a lot more research um Mm -hmm. applying for jobs and you're not just like throwing away your resume all over the place you know yes yes so um that's i think that's usually the best way to go about it i would say Uh And uh, when you are sending your applications, uh, do you always attach a portfolio or is it just that they can click on a link to your website? Yeah, so that's a really um, one of the most important things. So the more we have moved into this online world over these last 15, 20 years, I would say, mm-hmm. uh, the more important it is to simply have an online portfolio, you know, mm-hmm. so just put on a website, um, put it on your portfolio link somewhere so they can click on a bam, you he'll, he'll pull up your entire portfolio. Because not only does it show all of your work and everything that you've done so far, but it also shows how skilled are you in web design? Do you understand the visual hierarchy of things? You know, are you able to really present your work sufficiently, you know, or, or are you only good at creating the work, but you have no clue how to present it properly, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's a really important aspect of it. And so you definitely want to have a portfolio link in your, uh, in your resume. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that's a very, that's very good advice for everybody, especially in the, in the creative field. And um, if you are working with um, sculptures, for example, then obviously it would still be good to take pictures of those high quality pictures as well that you can then put on the website. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And plus, and, if, um, yeah. because nobody from the recruiters now even has the time anymore, you know, to actually flip through a PDF yeah. looking, nobody's got the time and nobody wants to do that, you know? They just want to click on your website, scroll through for the next five, 10 seconds, and be like, okay, cool, you know? It's really the very first impression they're going to get, you know? And that's only mere moments from the moment they open the website or your portfolio until they're done with it. So in those few seconds, you really want to make an impression that lasts and that stays with the recruiter. So yeah. it's really important to just have really uh, easily accessible online portfolio. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And when you then are invited to a job interview, um, do you normally get like a a technical task or something that you have to fulfill? I, not necessarily. That's usually for, um, for IT jobs and technology jobs, which do not require a solid foundation, for example, college degree or a trade or anything that you're familiar mm-hmm. with, you know. Um, then they sometimes expect a, um, what's called a skills assessment uh, to kind of see where they're at, you know. But um, don't fret about that because any company is going to train you and bring you up to standards okay. with their okay. goals on what you want, what they want you to know anyway, you know. So, and uh, but for designers, usually you do not have any kind of test like that, you know. Um, sometimes they may ask like a test, um, like about your knowledge about certain software, you know, like if you're, of course we all use Adobe extensively, you know, and they may ask, um, where in Illustrator can you find XYZ or Mm -hmm. why would you use this application rather than that application? You know, usually something simple like that. Um, Mm -hmm. but definitely no real skills assessment um it can happen it's up to the company but generally speaking it's not the case okay okay so uh but it's still there are some technical questions but it's not that you have to fulfill a task because obviously with art i think it's it can be very time consuming right and you got your portfolio again you know to really show how skilled you are so there's really no it, it would just be more redundant if they then ask you again to create another project or another 
sample of whatever, you know, so. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, so now, would you say that, well, so when you are comparing, for example, the German market, German job market and the US American job market, do you say, say it's better to be a UX UI designer in the US compared to Germany? Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> and, and I'm going to explain to this. Yeah, good. Uh, I mean, my heart is in Germany. I love Germany when it comes to the history side of things. But mm -hmm. when it comes to employment opportunities, it's definitely in the US because we have such a huge number of companies and job opportunities for those types of jobs, you know. So this it's just simply the scale of it. It's just so much larger, you know. And it's just simply, I mean, if you think like uh, Germany is like two thirds of the size of Texas alone, you know, so I can basically say my state is bigger than your country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> well, like just, just imagine Houston, Texas, right? Ever heard of Houston? You know, if you take the entire Austin, uh, Houston area, it's larger than Great Britain. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> the scale of that, you know, there's just so many more opportunities, so many more companies, so much more variety, you know, to where um, then really in Germany alone, because basically you can just like count on like two fingers, basically the companies that would that are looking for these types of jobs. So mm -hmm. um, I would say you definitely be a lot more fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. And obviously there are uh, everything, yeah, everything that, that in my eyes, eyes everything, everything that is technology based is so much so more much advanced in the US as well as compared well, like especially in the IT field and and then obviously if you are designing apps or websites and everything like that, a lot of Germans are always copying what the Americans are doing. And I know that there is like a very big tech giant. Um and I really love him here in Germany. His name is Frank Tier. So if Anybody is interested in the tech field, Frontierin is the guy that you should follow. Um, but even he is uh, looking up to Elon Musk, for example, or he is also very frustrated with the way how the Germans are suppressing the development in the technolo technological field here in Germany. I mean, just think about the um, just think about having internet everywhere. I remember, I think it was in 2016 or somewhere. I went on holiday and asked the people whether there's free Wi-Fi at the airport. And they said, we're an international airport, of course. And I said, well, sorry, in Germany, we don't have free Wi-Fi at the airport. And, and that, I mean, pandemic has improved that situation, but still, we are very slow with regards to that, yeah? And um, yeah, I totally agree to what you're saying. It's really kind of shocking, you know, because when you realize that, for example, the banking system or the security systems, you know, They've come so incredibly far, like over here, you know, any bank that you sign up with, you have an app for it on the phone, you can scan and checks, you can just deposit money, everything on the phone, just like that. Everything is encrypted, everything is safe, they have their own cyber security team, nothing to worry about, you know. Whereas in Germany, certain banks, you know, they're still pencil and paper when it comes to like, you know, whatever. And, you know, and, that, and that's the same thing about, for example, the employment agency or any kind of yeah. Yeah. agency, you know, um, it's all just so bureaucratically old school and outdated, you know, mm -hmm. to where everything still requires paper, you know, and then maybe you can scan it and maybe you can fax it at some point, you know, but yeah. usually you have to bring it in, whereas here, everything is electronic already, you know, and so if... I feel like if Germany were to really improve on that side of things, it would open up a huge job market, you know, in so many areas. And plus mm -hmm. it would, uh, like, it would just like shoot Germany all the way up to the front of all of the mm -hmm. industrial, industrial nations, you know, on mm -hmm. when it comes to any kind of development, when it comes to science, you know, when it comes to technology, just everything really. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, we are getting close to the end of our interview, unfortunately. <laughs> but I want to ask you one question, and um, here you can think about your private life or your work life. It's basically a question of what kind of topic are you most interested in right now? What are you researching? Uh, probably 
besides being a always like figuring out human psychology yeah. and really yeah. the uh, the fundamental differences, um, I would say it is sustainability and um, plant-based living in every field. So don't say, oh, she's vegan. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the point i'm trying to make you know but yeah. Yeah. we're basically like moving away from um animal control clothing you know to various types of uh plant-based clothing you know because there's so many plants out there you know that are so beneficial for us where we can create sustainable clothes you know um where we don't have to haul, to keep like a herd of i don't know like two three hundred sheep you know, and then we have to provide water for them. We have to feed them, you know, and then they have to be brought to slaughter. All of this takes up so much resources that can easily be uh, replaced with plant-based living, you know, and that and that then encompasses anything really. It goes into a hygiene products, so like shampoo, conditioner. Um, it goes to cleaning products. It goes to paper products. Um, really, anything you know, that you can really think of. And I think it's a really, really crucial part to really go into that direction. Um, if you understand that um, animal based living and industrial animal farming mm -hmm. uh, is really the downfall of modern civilization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really interesting topics. And I, um, uh, I totally understand that you're into them. <laughs> so uh, psychology is always something that I'm interested in and seeing the different aspects of the humans and how they interact with one another. I, um, if I were to do another degree at the university, it would probably be in psychology. And then obviously sustainability needs to be a topic that we all need to care about. And um, this, I, I, I think I've seen a trend in the US starting that has swapped over already with regards to plant-based living. Uh, so thank you very much for that um, input again, because then maybe some people can make a shift. So now that we have learned so much about the uh, creative ways of applying and the way how you work as a UX researcher, a UX UI designer and photographer, where can people find you if they want to book your services? So as you can see, my name down here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Facebook. Um, I think I'm like on WhatsApp and all that stuff too. And yeah. of course the yeah. website, artofyoukimjulie.com, you know, should usually be popping up, first one in Google. Um, anything you'll see, it's going to be black and teal, you know, like I've been black since, I don't know, like 20 years now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so with teal being my signature color and have been for the last decade or so, um, that's really what represents me. So when you see something teal and black, it's me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing you. Perfect. Okay. Well, a massive thanks for, uh, thank you from my side. I'm so grateful that you took the time to talk to me today and um, to also answer some of the comments of the people. Let me take a look. Okay, yeah, I think there are no more questions with regards to the design field. So I felt really honored that you were my guest today. So thank you very much. And all the best of luck for your future endeavors in the design area. Thank you and bye-bye.